Hello TypeScript fans! Today we will look at type widening and type narrowing. And to begin with, we need to define what is a wide type and what is a narrow type. So let's start by writing down a text. I will create a const called text and then I will annotate a type and I will use a very wide type, the type of any. Now I can assign a value to that type. I will use a string. Let me just quickly change the string value to hello. And then we will see that although we assigned a string value, we will have a type of any because we annotated the any type. Even better is to use the type string because now text cannot be any type anymore. It can only be of type string. Yeah, if we hover over text, we see only strings are allowed. So I cannot just use, for example, a value that is of a type Boolean, for example, false. Yeah, that wouldn't work. I need to use a string now. So I need to use, for example, hello. That's already even better and even narrower because from all the options I had in the beginning, I narrowed it down to the values that are of type string. I can go even further with this. I can use a string literal. A literal type only allows one value. So if I then change string to the literal hello, then I can just assign hello here. So I cannot, for example, assign hello world because this would breach here this type annotation, which is now saying only hello is allowed. To visualize this, I made a little drawing. Here in the drawing, we can see the very wide type of any and then we can narrow it down to only string values and we can go one step further to string literals. So literal types here, hello, are the most narrow version in that sense. Now that we know what is a wide type and what is a narrow type, let's dive into what is type widening and type narrowing. So type narrowing is going from a wide type to a narrow type, yeah, to narrow down this type, this is type narrowing, and type widening is going from an already narrow type to a wider type. So for example, going from the string literal hello to the type of all strings is called type widening. When does type widening take place? Actually, type widening can take place implicitly by using the let keyword. Let's go back to our example here with hello. In the case we are using the const keyword, we will see that the text is then of the literal type hello. But if we use the let keyword, then our variable can be changed. It's not a constant anymore. And that's why the type is now of type string. So we are allowed now to use every string value and we can reassign the text variable. For example, I can say the text now is hello world. In that case, it has a new value and it got widened to the type of string because we used let. There are a few other cases. We can have a similar effect when we use, for example, booleans. So let me use a feature flag that I set to true. Then here we will have the literal type of true. And when we change now the const keyword to let, then I can reassign the feature flag. And this is why the type now is widened to boolean. The same also happens with numbers. So when I have, for example, my favorite number or let's call it my lucky number and my lucky number is 72. Then we can see here it has the uh, literal type 72. Yeah, it's a numeric literal. And if I change const now to let, then this uh, 72 type gets widened to the type of all numbers. And last but not least, we can see that effect happening with enums. So if I have, for example, an enum that is called connection state and I have 
connection state that can be offline or online and I then use that state here with the const keyword. I create a constant. I say that my state here now is online. Then I will see that this state here can only be online. Yeah, I cannot assign it now to offline. That uh, wouldn't work. But as soon as I use the let keyword, then the state here can become of any value here inside that enum. So I can assign it to connection state online or connection state offline. And I don't know like exactly what uh, my state will have at a later point in time. These cases all look uh, very simple. What um, can be more tricky is when we are playing with arrays. So let me just create an array. One, two, three. Then this array will also have a widened type of number array. So it doesn't have the narrower type of a tuple. Yeah, the tuple one, two, three. It has um, the type of number array. Why is that the case? It's the case because the elements inside of that array can still be modified. So I will be allowed to, for example, push new elements into that array. I can push the number four here and then one, two, three, four are inside of this array. And that's why TypeScript widens the type to number array. If I would use um, a tuple, for example, let's annotate here the tuple one, two, three, then the push will be disallowed. Yeah, I will get here the TypeScript error 2345. Yeah, easy to remember, 2345. Yeah, I will run into this error because I now say that um, this here is um, a tuple. So only values that are part of the tuple can be pushed. I can completely disallow pushing new values into the array by using the read only keyword. Yeah. So when I declare here this array as a constant, then I will see that it is now in read only tuple, which means that I am now really disallowed to push any new element. So even if I try to push my lucky number 72, it will not be possible. Another scenario that can be very surprising is the type widening when you don't define a function return value type. So let's create a function and I will call that function return lucky number. And then I won't specify the return type. Yeah, I will just um, let TypeScript um, do what TypeScript does and it will then implicitly set a type for me, a return value type. So even if I return here 72, yeah, it's um, an exact value, then TypeScript will say, hey, that uh, function can return any number yeah, because I can also put here 1337, yeah, any number I can put here. But even though I have a specific number here, TypeScript implicitly sets the return type to number. And this can lead to some consequences and it can also um, cause then some uh, stupid mistakes on my end because if I say then that for example I have um, a lucky number here that I assign to return lucky number then that um, lucky number here is 1337 yeah I see that here now having the source code right in front of me so checking that lucky number for, for example, being 1338, 1338, then it um, is unnecessary because it can never come into that situation. How can I prevent it and how can I help TypeScript telling me that uh, this here is unnecessary? Well, I can explicitly set a return type and if I then use uh, a narrower type, for example, run 337, then TypeScript will tell me that this check here is unnecessary because this condition can never occur. That's something to keep in mind because the narrower your types are, the more TypeScript can help you. 
let us write a function that returns an online status. So I will name that here get online state. And in the get online state function, I will not explicitly define the return type. I will just say that it returns on. Then TypeScript will widen the type. So instead of sticking to that uh, string literal of on, it will widen the type to be string. Yeah. So if I check here the return value type, then I see that it is uh, of type string. And this can uh, cause then some problems later on. For example, when I want to show my state, if I want to, for example, show if I'm offline, let me say show offline state, then I can pass on a state that can be either on or off. And I want TypeScript then to just print that here on the console. So I want it to print that I'm offline when the state is off. The state is off, we will print you are offline. So that is um, good. And here we have a union type. So it won't accept any string value. And this can cause now some trouble. If I want to show if I'm online or offline, or in this case, if I'm offline, and I want to use the value that I get back from my get online state function, then it won't work because get online state is widened to be of type string. Yeah, we see here that uh, it returns a string and the string cannot be used as a parameter for this union type here. And this is where you can easily, for example, solve it by using narrower types. So for example, when we would um, write here an explicit return value and we would define that the return value of that get online state method is on, yeah, so the string literal of on, then the function here will return on and on is allowed to be passed in as a parameter into the show offline state function. There is also an alternative to this. So if you don't want to define an explicit return uh, value type here, then you can make a type check. So you can, for example, say that uh, my online state equals the return value of get online state. And this can again be of any value in the family of strings. But if you check for the value, for example, if you check if my online state equals on, then TypeScript knows that inside this block here, the my online state must be on, which means that we can then pass it on here to that function. If I hover over it, we will see that it got narrowed down from string, which we had here in uh, the beginning. It got narrowed then with that if check to on and on is allowed as an input parameter to the show offline state function. To finalize my demo, I will give you one more example, which is also tricky and can uh, cause you some headaches uh, later on. So I want to um, show that to you right now so that you are prepared in case you will face that problem. And uh, the problem is even when you use the const keyword and you say, okay, you have a constant that is on of value on, and you have um, a constant off of value off, then you seem to be fine because here you see that it's the string literal off and here you can see that on has the string literal off on. So on can only be on and off can only be off. So that um, might create the impression that you can create now a states array and you can here into the states array write on and off. Yeah, you pass in those two constants and then you might think, okay, states can now also like only be of on and off. So an array that contains either on or off. But if you hover over it, you will see that the type again 
got widened. So TypeScript widened here the type to be of any string. Why did TypeScript do that? Well, we've seen the array example in the beginning. I can push new values here into that state array. So I could push, for example, um, an idle state. And that's why the states are not narrowed down and are widened to be a string array. This in the end causes then a problem when you want to access a value here of states. Because when you want to access, for example, the first element inside of the states, then you will have the current state, let's say, and the current state is then just any kind of string. And you lost information from your code because you knew in the beginning that it can only be on and you had that exact value at hand. Then you push that value here into an array. And when you accessed it on the array, you lost the information about the string literal. Luckily, you know now how to fix it. You know that you can just annotate here this um, states constant with uh, a more narrow type. And you can then write here, okay, on or off, so that the first element is on and the second element is off. And then when you access the um, first index here in that element, you will get the current state of on. I hope my examples have been helpful for you to understand type widening and type narrowing. And I want to emphasize that it is really important to keep your types as narrow as possible. If you liked my tutorial, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel because every week I'm releasing new videos and best practices around TypeScript.